Uh, so here we have the iFly RC Rebo B32 F7 flight controller. And this is basically an Omnibus F7. It's one of the latest uh, flight controllers that have been uh, uh, released. Uh, this one is uh, got uh, a whole bunch of features. Uh, it's pretty much pretty loaded. I mean, it's kind of unbelievable they can pack package that huge. Uh, that huge MCU in this uh, basically it's a 36 by 36 uh, board. Uh, it's got uh, dual SPI gyros, uh, but you, of course you can only use one at a time. Uh, one is the MPU 6000, which is one of the most common ones, uh, one of the better ones because it's, it's not as uh, uh, affected by noise and vibrations that much. So, so that's the the more stable one and it also has the ICM 2608 which is supposed to be able to run 32k 32k uh, the, M the MPU 6000 is uh, I think that one is pretty much limited to 8k so 8k 8k so the uh, that's what they're putting the the, the two gyros but uh, I don't know yet of anybody running the ICM 2608, uh, but I'm sure eventually somebody will. Uh, you just have to have you have to have a very vibration-free um, uh, setup for that. This board uh, has a built-in OSD um, through the through Betaflight software. So you can see there's the Max 7456 chip, and uh, it's got the micro SD car slot, so you can do black box uh, logging. It's got a built-in 2 amp uh, 5 volt uh, back, which is uh, they say it's it's LC filtered. Uh, so I see a, a inductor there, and then some uh, capacitors there. So it's probably it's probably filtered a little bit. Uh, doesn't look like it's a very robust filter but hopefully it's enough to get a clean video so why are they going to F7 uh, I mean uh, we thought F3 was this was the end all uh, end all of uh, uh, CPUs and they went to the F4 uh, then we thought okay that's pretty powerful uh, that runs uh, F F4 runs at 168 megahertz uh, but uh, here we are with the F7, which is running at 216 megahertz, uh, quite fast, and it's got all kinds of pins. I think this is a 64 pin uh, layout. Uh, so this one, theoretically, you can have up to eight UARTs available, but uh, not all of those are going to be available for you to use because simply because there's probably not enough room to to uh, have the traces out to the pins. Uh, I mean, you gotta. The designer has to decide what which is most important. Uh, so you know some pins may not be connected, but anyway, uh, since this has built-in OSD, black box uh, SD card, and uh, uh, a dedicated pin for I think it has a dedicated pin for your receiver. So basically, you don't need that many UARTs. I mean. One or two UARTs should be enough. I think uh, most people are gonna just be using this for free freestyling or acro racing, so uh, don't need that many UARTs. So this shot on this uh, is implemented up to 600 on the latest builds. I didn't see it uh, containing the D shot 1200 yet, uh, but I'm sure that's coming. And uh, the way it came, I think that's included these uh, these grommets, which are rubber. So that, that's supposed to help with uh, vibration. So if you use those and probably mount it in one of those uh, in those uh, dampeners, you know those soft rubber mounts, uh, then uh, that'll help with vibration. So so let's look at it on the. Uh, on the magnifying glass, so you can see the layout. Uh, it's pretty. Looks like a pretty well-made uh, board. Uh, everything looks pretty neat and uh, pre very nice uh, soldering on the PCV. 
So let's just check it out on the magnifying glass. Okay, so there it is, uh, as you can see. Very nice uh, soldering on this board. Uh, there's the uh, OSD chip, Max 7456, and there's the 5 volt uh, back with uh, looks like some uh, some filter in there and some filter in there for the uh, for the OSD part, so you can get uh, clean video, um, which is important because you know everything is. It's just uh, cramped into this small space, and there's a lot of uh, could be a lot of electrical noise there. So you want to make sure you have some good filtering. And uh, I mean, there's more pins that you probably ever use. There's all kinds of pins there. Uh, two of these buttons. This one's the boot pin, uh, boot uh, button. I don't know what that is. Uh, so there's the MPU 6000 and the IC, ICM uh, 2608, I believe that's the one. And that seems to be a barrow, a barometer. So I didn't see on the, uh, I didn't see if it was enabled on the configurator. I have to check back on that. And so, all kinds of stuff there. Most of them we won't use them. So. Okay, let's uh, connect the Omnibus F7 to Betaflight configurator. And uh, as you can see, this comes with uh, a early version of Betaflight uh, 3.2. And this was released on May 6, 2017. So this one's uh, a little bit outdated. That's what it, what it comes with on, on, from the... Um, from the vendor from the factory and this is the is using the omnibus f7 target uh, so it it works uh it works as normal pretty much and as you can see it on it does have uh, two available ports and uh pretty much uh everything else that all the other fcs have uh uh, one shot D shot uh, up to 600 so it's not yet implementing the D shot 1200 uh, protocol so that's not yet uh, enabled and then everything else is pretty much pretty much the same there's one way of uh, updating this of course you it's not uh, you're not gonna find the uh, the 3.2 available on the uh, from the firmware flasher within the configurator as you can see, there's, there's no Omnibus F7 yet. So the only way to update the firmware is not here yet because it's not ready. So they haven't added it yet. Uh, uh, one thing you do want to make sure is that you have the latest configurator too. Uh, anyway, um, one way to update it is if you go to the... Uh, this is sort of like the nightly builds or so. Uh, this is where they dump the latest builds. Uh, so you go to this is one of the sites I, I I just kind of found it googling. I'm sure there's more. So this one is supposed to be. Uh, uh, this was done on June 25, June 25th. Uh, so this one's for the whole Beta Flight 3.2. So you download that. You get the zip file, and then you get all the bins and hexes here. So as you can see, there's the Omnibus F7 there. So you can load that locally to the configurator and flash it to your uh, to your board. You extract that and uh, then you can load the firmware. And then you just flash it. Of course you have to be in DFU mode. So. So let's uh, see if that works. All right, so if your board is not showing, uh, if the DFU is not getting enabled after you press the boot uh, button on the FC, then you need to use uh, SADIG. Uh, you basically, you got to press the, the boot button and then connect it to the USB. Uh, then, uh, you gotta make sure you have uh, list all devices and uh, pick 
STM32 bootloader. Uh, this has to show STM32 bootloader. And then you'll have, uh, I already did it, but it'll have here uh, something like a STM32 bootloader or something like that. So then put Win USB right here and reinstall driver. And then once you do that, then you'll get the DFU here and then you're able to flash uh, to flash the firmware. So uh, you load your firmware. Just make sure you have a no reboot sequence and full ship erase and then just hit flash. And it should flash. So there we go. there's erasing and then it'll flash. Uh, so there it goes, and it goes back to COM5, so that means it, it's working. Uh, then connect. And there's the latest uh, release, uh, June 25th, 2017. will be F7, Omnibus F7 target. So it seems to be working. Let's see the ports. Now it's got uh, more ports available. Uh, before it, there was only two, I believe. So now they added uh, UART3. So that's pretty good. Uh, still only has D shot 600. So 1200 is not yet implemented. Anyways, the, that's also dependent on ESCs. I think those are just coming out or they haven't come out yet. And uh, eventually it's going to have. Uh, an option to select uh, whichever gyro you want to use. I don't think it's implemented yet. So right now you have to do it through CLI. So I don't know if they're going to do it through the front end right here where you would just uh, uh, select it with a button. But uh, that's I'm sure that's, that's coming. You just got to wait for the latest updates. So yeah, that's the... Uh, Omnibus F7, uh, gonna try it on this new build uh, from iFlyRC. This particular one is the from iFlyRC.com, the F7 Rebo B32, but it's it's based on the Omnibus F7 basically. It's got the OSD, built-in OSD, so you can just uh, uh, turn off whatever you want. So yep, yeah, works pretty good. So we'll see, uh, uh, this F7 will probably not make me a top ace pilot, but it's just kind of neat to use all these uh, new hardware. Kind of fun just to get it to work. Alright, so that's the short overview of this uh, F7 from iFlyRC. Thanks for sending it, and just, uh, just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, uh, so this would be a good, uh, if you were out looking for a flight controller uh, and you want to you know, be uh, ahead of the game, uh, this would be a good option. Uh, and it should uh, pretty much uh, future-proof your, your setup as they work on the firmware. Uh, it, it'll hopefully it'll just keep getting better. Alright, until the next video, thanks for watching.